This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Central Texas Life with Ann Harder presents Central Texas Events. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Central Texas Events. And coming up on October 11th and 12th, correct? Yes. The Learning to Exhale Creative Mm. Symposium. And the wonderful Sophia Strother Lewis is with me. It's always good to see you. It is. We were just talking about how long we've been knowing each other. Yes. It's been a little while. It's been over 15 years now. (laughs) Yeah. I just can't believe it. I know. know? You were just a you were just a baby. I was a whippersnapper back then. I'm I'm (laughs) definitely not a whippersnapper. I was. (laughs) Nor am I. Nor am I. But but it's always a delight to talk to you because I always feel uplifted and encouraged and and you may think yeah but you know I've been through a lot of stuff <laughs> but, yeah, and you things. have and you have and we're going to talk about that a little bit but that's sort of the spark as a survivor mm-hmm. the spark for planning the learning to exhale creative symposium yes um that, that's where it came from yes it did I uh, in about about 2017, 2018, I feel God really gave me, because I was just working through some other things, and he gave me the Learning to Exhale Restoration philosophy. Mm-hmm. And it was a three-part phase to find your voice, embrace your now, and exhale for your future. And typically, I would take people through, almost like a life coaching, about the three phases of that, how you have to sometimes stop to just catch your breath. You have to realize that the mind matters but the mouth disrupts and so many times we allow our mind to go places and we don't disrupt negative thoughts depression anxiety or things you just can't control and so as you're waiting to exhale which is the second step you take stock of your fab five and that is where do I want to be and who is surrounding me within my family friends faith future and finances and those five f's really can dictate a trajectory for you as far as how well you want to do and where you want to go in life. And once you take stock of that and really try to target purposefully, these individuals in my life are toxic. It's time for me to let them go or limit my time. Or when it comes to my finances, I really need to take control of my, my debt or where I want to go financially. Once you kind of get that of where you want to be, then you can go into the final step, which is the I am. And you start provoking manifestation by claiming what you are before it's even happened. We talk about faith without works is dead Mm -hmm. and the power of the tongue is life and death. Well, speak life into your own future. I am healed. I am a survivor. I am thriving. I am debt free. Until you reach that point, start speaking those things and actively doing things to make that happen. And that's the process of learning to exhale. And even with my own personal struggles uh, over the last few years, I've been having to really invoke my own philosophy. And this is kind of um, the, um, the revealing of what that really looks like for survivors and others that are aspiring to be in performing arts or in the entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you're living Yes. You're living this philosophy. Yes. So this is designed to be an immersive experience. Yes. Um, as you say, to supercharge your career and find your voice with workshops on everything from brand identity, marketing, fundraising, mental yes. empowerment. This will be at the Herd Center there yes. at Baylor. Beautiful yes. building. Beautiful. Wonderful. And it's free. It's free. Thanks to Creative Waco. Thanks to Baylor University. Thanks to BCFS um, Common Thread Program where they provide services for those that have been human trafficked. And, you know, they've allowed um, this little old girl to come on through and um, let them know, hey, you know, there is opportunities that we're not given the game, as I call it. Um, when I really started in this industry over 20 years ago, nobody sat down to talk to me about what what does it look like to build a brand? What is it to have a unique identity? Asking me the question, what is the experience I want to leave people with either the merchandise I have or my talent that I have? Nobody sat down and talked to me about building my financial house, how important it is to have contracts, royalties, publishing, intellectual property, even having a will in place. Because even though I may not own a home, I have intellectual property, which is a part of my estate. Yeah. Um, The importance of being able to manage my time in between projects, how to prioritize which talent I want to really expound upon 
or gift that I have. And so we have um, professionals and experts that are flying in from Atlanta, New York. We have speakers from Houston and Dallas that will come deal with having um, mental health resiliency within this industry. You get a lot of no's. You get some disappointments. Right. You have to develop <laughs> a little bit of a tough You hide. do. You really yeah. do. Yeah. And also, we just deal with life. So even outside of what we deal within the industry, people still have lives. And so we'll have a mental health um, component. And one of my most uh, exciting is that we'll have a panel um, with men because I really wanted to dive into the mental health of men. And it's called Men Exhale 2. Mm -hmm. And um, we have former NFL player Chris Davis coming in. We have another gentleman um, that also is the founder of Change Nation. And then we have Darius Brown with Waco ISD that yeah. does a lot of things for young men. He's actually, I think it's called Pro Father or Pro Dad program that they're doing at Waco um, ISD. And mm -hmm. I'm just excited that we can shine a light on men, and especially because I'm tapping into a little bit of the uptick of the violence that have been happening in Waco and knowing that the majority of those perpetrating the crimes have been young men, those that have been unfortunately passing from the crimes are young men. Oh, yeah. And right now for black men, the number one cause of death is suicide between ages 15 to 24. And we're not really talking about that. I, I was not aware of that. Yes. And so this is an opportunity for us to shine a light on the importance of mental health. Mm -hmm. And hopefully some of the programming that we talk about during this creative symposium can be solutions that we can enact in Waco so that we can really get at 15 to 21 year olds that there's not a lot for them to do maybe we can create some more outlets okay so these that are this is all happening the 11th and 12th yes um, what are the hours so it's daily from 9 to 4 okay. each day and we have live music performances that are happening on Saturday with the Kenny Keys trio we have DJ Precise who is Central Texas oh, he own. Is so much yes fun. and he's gonna be doing a jam <laughs> out session it, yeah. on Friday um, and then we have lunch that'll be provided on Saturday mm -hmm. which Dr. Pepper Museum which is also one of our partners in this um, for those that do track two that are dedicated to like music um, spoken word visual art arts, graphic design, things of that nature. We'll be touring the Dr. Pepper Museum, talking about those particular um, ways of how to incorporate your voice um, that can be visually displayed. And then track one is with acting. And so we're partnering with the Waco Independent Film Festival um, to do an immersive around the city of Waco where they can see this is production companies. This is where you can get this done. This is where you can film at. And we have grants, which I didn't even know that they will grant to individuals to do short films. And so they'll really be able to get an immersive reality about all the different things that Waco has to offer. You don't have to secure a company in Houston or Dallas or San Antonio. You can do it right here in Waco. A lot is happening here. The last time we visited uh, the beautiful little Ani Simba, your yes. daughter, was uh, with us. We were talking about a film yes. uh, that you guys were working on, and she's going to be the Symposium Youth Ambassador. Yes, she is. She will be there. So let's let's talk a little bit about your film and how how. Catch, catch me up. Yes. Yeah. So uh, me and my daughter embarked on writing a trilogy um, called Love You to the Moon and 2022. Um, and so it now has kind of morphed into potentially becoming a series because we've gotten so much interest about developing out the characters that was a part of the movie. We thought it might be better to do a series because then we can go different ways with all the different characters and really develop them out and, and have the audience be able to build a relationship with them and see themselves in some of those characters. So we are still working on that project. And this was something that we both wanted to do from a generational standpoint sure. because she is a part of the younger generation um, she's currently a student at texas state university taking up film production <laughs> i um, would hope so yes um she wanted to make sure that she could engage the younger audience that they don't typically get even some of the experience in college so we've been fortunate enough to be able to pitch shows to disney and Every option that we've done, I've taken her with me because you don't get that kind of experience in college on how to do impromptu proposals and pitches to um, executives and how to go back and kind of tweak your creation to meet their needs if that's something you want to do. And so this will allow um, her generation to hear directly from individuals like her because they tend to listen to their own before they listen to older people. Yeah. Um, and it gives her great experience on how for herself even to network and build her her brand and become an entrepreneur in this space. It is just remarkable what all you have been able to accomplish. Um, 
how how can people do they need to sign up ahead of time or yes. in and and how many can you accommodate on the herd center is nice and spacious it's ridiculous it's a long large. period of time but i'm sure you've got things yeah. broken down in sessions and so yes forth. we so, do we have breakout sessions so and how so can on. folks you know kind of see that and plan yes their, plan their so time. you can register for free it's all free it's all free and we are asking for people to register because we are providing um lunch on saturday yeah. and we want to just have a, a good head count and be able to provide but um the space is, is limitless i mean you can have up to three to four hundred people in that space um we're looking for a more intimate so about a hundred mm -hmm. um so that um the experts that we have you can actually scheduled to do one-on-ones with them that afternoon so the building will be open from five to nine for you to do one-on-ones directly with all the experts that we're bringing in on that friday evening as well and so you can go to sophiastrother.com um s-o-p-h-i-a S T is in Tom, R O T is in Tom again, H E R.com and register for free. And if you do, you also get a swag bag and a t-shirt long as you register before October 1st. <laughs> You've got it all covered. Yes. You've got it all covered. Well, it, it's really exciting, you yeah. know, to me to hear about that. Um, got a little bit of time left. I need you to catch me up personally on how things have been going. Well, personally, and I know we talked um, briefly that, I embarked on a justice journey, as I call it. Unfortunately, in 2021, I was kidnapped, tortured, and raped um, by an illegal immigrant. And, you know, it's definitely been a journey that no one could have prepared me for. And there was a time I didn't want to embark on it because there's so much that goes into having your voice be heard. And we're even seeing it play out on national news with P Diddy. And, yeah. you know, it took Cassie to finally have the cura um, courageous amount um, of just, I think strength um, to come out because it, when she first came out, nobody believed her. Oh, she's money hungry. Oh, she just wants something. Why did she stay so long? Right. And as I tell people, you know, and I'm going to say it, I sought justice against a nobody. And when I say that, he's not famous. Nobody knows him, and he's a nobody because of what he did to me. But it still was a hellish experience. It was one of the worst things that I've ever endured. It completely stripped my dignity. It completely stripped my self value, and I felt that I was. A healthy survivor from surviving trafficking in the past and child sexual assault and domestic violence I just thought that I could handle it and I could not all the systems um, to a certain degree failed me in the process from prosecution to local law enforcement to the healthcare system at some point no advocacy is in place and still thank God for a change in my prosecutor um, at the very last minute in uh, November of 2023 um, Ryan, who um, represented my case on behalf of the state, was able to get a conviction by the jury, but a visiting judge decided that um, my perpetrator's rights were more important than mine and his security and safety and what he wanted was more important than mine. And as a result, he is now on the run um, and Lone Star Fugitive Task Force is currently looking for him. It's something that I I encourage people to look up my story. If you see this man, please call 911 um, because I am still living in a space where my perpetrator is on the run. Well, and and as a result, I mean, are you con you're concerned about your safety. Yeah, my own safety. And so some of the things, unfortunately, that I've had to do, I, I owned a company called L2E Industries where mm -hmm. I was contracted with Amazon to deliver packages. We had almost a fleet of 40. I had a staff of about 100 and I had to make a very hard decision due to a medical condition I now have as a result of my um, assault and just the mental component that comes with knowing your perpetrator is out there. Um, I had to make a decision to voluntarily terminate that contract and close my company which caused a lot of emotional and financial distress but I had to make a decision what was best for me um, physically I just cannot manage the way I used to um, I've had 10 or 11 procedures as a result um, physical um, result and it's going to be something I have to deal with for the rest of my life and even though it can be very depressing at times I felt like I'm at my best um, when I am putting on events that benefit others giving them what I didn't have. It's it's a, a survivor healing complex, I guess. And for me, um, the Learning to Excel Creative Composing was very healing because 
I decided to write a film and to get into that space when I was going through because it allowed me to escape. Sure. It was a great deflection from the reality that I was in. And I thought how many other survivors could benefit from learning different ways of how to elevate their voice, how to create a reality and an income at the same time in this industry um, while they're going through or while they're healing. And so I make a very clarent call to anyone that survived anything in life that this is a great way for you to learn how to elevate your voice. If you work for an organization that supports um, survivors, it's a great way for you to come and learn how to give additional resources mm -hmm. help, yeah. for us as we're trying to rebuild our lives. It's not enough to just tell us, go work at Walmart, you can go work at Target, get a job at McDonald's and rebuild. No, there's other things that we can do. We can be real estate agents, like I'm a real estate agent. You can go out and write films or write jingles for commercials or movies. Like there's so many different aspects that they can embark on that can be employment and also can be healing unlimited creativity yes is, is there and and of course that storytelling component w between the acting and the filmmaking and the you know creative the writing part yes. of it um, that is so therapeutic it is as as for you just putting on this whole learning to exhale creative symposium is therapy for you it too. is it is yeah. and because again i've been through enough to where i could sit around and cry all day but life is too short for me to do that mm -hmm. and the fact that i feel god allowed me to um make it through with my right mind um and to make it through with a reasonable portion of my health i feel very lucky and blessed because there's a lot of women and men that didn't make it through That's that right. didn't survive that lost their battle with this whether it's by suicide or whether it's by literally they lost their life as the result of an assailant they didn't make it through and so i made it through and so how can i help some others make it through because i had to go through it somewhat alone and I would never wish that on anybody. I thank God for my husband now and for my children and some family members. But I lost family members and friends through this because my trauma was too much for them. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm unapologetic about, you know, telling my story and having my voice be heard because there's a lot of people that they may never share their story publicly, but by me being public allows them a sense of um, validity in what they went through. and. If I can give that to just a few people, I've done my job. Well, it conveys a sense of boldness mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that. Yeah. Again, the Learning to Exhale Creative Symposium, October 11th and 12th at the beautiful Herd yes, Welcome Center at yes. Baylor University. If you haven't been there, this just yes. <laughs> sign up to go see yes, this it's beautiful space. But again, th many people helping you with this yeah. because it is free. Yes. Baylor University among them. And yes, Creative say, Waco. Pedder, Creative Waco, which is I mean, this fits right into their Oh, ambition, yeah, it does. Sure. And it was just a win-win. I mean, I love Fiona Bond and Bree yeah. and that whole staff and team. And I just sat down with Kennedy to talk about it a little bit. And it just go it correlates with it. And it's also why Q and Coda Films out of Arlington, which initially Kurjan is from Waco. But that's why they also jumped on as a media sponsors alongside me because this is something that needs to be done. Stories continue um, to be had and need to be told absolutely and this is the this is the vehicle this is the way to uh, to get the tools yes to make sure that that happens Sophia yes. it's always wonderful to see you thank, thank you, you. thank you so much we'll continue to pray for the success of learning to exhale creative symposium where can they go online to learn more so they can this? go to sophiastrother.com mm -hmm. um, they can also go to learning to exhale waco.rsvpfi.com as well yeah rsvp um, it's free it's free or you can go on facebook there is an event for it um, and the link is in there as well for them to find learning to excel creative symposium thank you thank, thank you, you sophia and thank you for being with us for central texas events and we'll see you next time bye bye this has been a rogue media network 